Part 1. White Clouds. Verdant Rain Moon. Tower of Black Winds. The ceaseless rains that satiate the verdant landscape of Fodlin are accompanied by fierce winds and mighty roars of thunder. This abundance of rain, sparkling as it falls against beams of emerging sunlight, is a constant reminder to the people of Fodlin that nature is ever wild and unpredictable. For when the rain finally does take pause, the clouds part and give way to a glorious rainbow. I have a new mission for you, Professor. I would like for you to take your students into Kingdom territory to eliminate some thieves. They stole a hero's relic from House Gautier of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, the Lance of Ruin. Their leader's name is Miklan. He is apparently a disowned son of House Gautier. I believe it had something to do with his lack of a crest. Such happenings are fairly common within the Kingdom. The Crestless cannot unleash the Goddess's power, even if they possess a relic. Nonetheless, they are still capable of simply wielding those weapons. The hero's relics are immensely powerful weapons. We must meet this threat with adequate force. Unfortunately, most of the Knights of Seros are away from the monastery, purging the apostates of the Western Church. So we are entrusting you with this mission. After all, you wield the Sword of the Creator which is more than capable of opposing any relic. The Sword of the Creator is a powerful weapon well beyond the other relics. You have nothing to fear. However, to ensure that no harm comes to the students, we will also send the Monastery's most skilled individuals to aid you. I must remind you that you are expected to conduct yourself in a manner befitting the wielder of that holy sword. Also, you should know that Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. That is all. Hey, Teach. I gotta say, I never would have guessed you were a descendant of the King of Liberation. You didn't forget, did you? That story I told you about a relic that could cut a mountain in half? That relic was the Sword of the Creator, the very same used by Nemesis, the King of Liberation. <laughs> Don't be coy, Teach. The Sword of the Creator could only be wielded by Nemesis. If you can use it too, that can only mean you have that bloodline's crest. Fine, keep your secrets. But just so you know, I don't understand isn't gonna cut it here at the monastery. Speaking of, Professor Hanneman has been looking for you. He probably wants to examine your crest with those crazy instruments of his. Actually, sounds amusing. Maybe I'll tag along. If it isn't my little Claude, what has you so worked up? Judith, what are you doing here? That's Lady Judith to you, boy. I told you, until you're in charge, I expect you to address me with all due respect. Anyway, I'm here to retrieve you. Duke Regan's condition has taken a turn for the worse. Are you saying the old man's on his deathbed? No, it's not that bad. But in the state he's in, he won't be able to participate in the next roundtable conference. He wants you to go in his stead. I volunteered to play the messenger. Well, thanks for that. Oh, and, uh, Teach, this is Judith, also known as the Hero of House Daphnel. So you're little Claude's teacher, are you? How much trouble has he been giving you? If her nickname didn't give it away, you should know that Judith, uh, Lady Judith, is the leader of the famous House Daphnel of the Leicester Alliance. 
She used to be a big deal at the roundtable conferences, but it seems of late she's been reduced to a mere... You had better shut that mouth before I put my boot in it, you tactless nuisance. Now come on, let's get going. Sorry, Professor, but I need to borrow the boy for a bit. I suppose we'll have to finish our chat later. Sorry, Teach. But don't you worry. I'll be back in time for our next mission. All right, Judith. Let's get going. It's Lady... Uh, I suppose you are the active leader for the time being. Fair enough, boy. Fair enough. Good of you to come, Professor. I've heard much about you lately. Specifically, that you are able to awaken the sword of the Creator's power. Thusly, it seems the true nature of your crest has been uncovered. I had, of course, seen your crest before. However, at first, I failed to recognize its true nature. Eventually, it dawned on me that what is visible is perhaps merely a small part of a greater whole. In other words, your crest is too significant to be detected when using normal instruments. After this discovery, I began researching crests that might fit that description, which allowed for a temporary hypothesis. However, I could not be certain. The crest my conclusions led me to was far too unusual. A crest thought to have disappeared from this world in the millennium since the fall of Nemesis, the King of Liberation. The Crest of Flames. That is what you possess. Your ability to wield the Sword of the Creator has unequivocally proven my hypothesis. A legendary power, dormant since time immemorial and now resurrected. There can be no doubt that this ancient power resides within you. Thank you for your invitation. To what do I owe this surprise? Mm, what a lovely smell. I like this tea very much. Thank you. Smells lovely. that terrible of a woman so I'm a little unkempt what of it has its thorn. Every beautiful leg should have a dagger, don't you think? It's good. Professor. Huh? Your gaze is sensuous. I don't hate it. Thanks for the treat. Come by the infirmary any time you need anything. I'll be waiting, Professor. I... who... Oh, settle down and stop with the knocking. Be there in two shakes. Oh, dear. Professor? Is that you? I... Just a moment. Oh, what should I do? 
can't open the door in this state. Manuela, you simply must quit oversleeping. Hold on. Where are my clothes? I can't even find my... Where in blazes is my underwear? Oh, I... What is my dressing robe belt caught on? I can't tie this properly. It's not even covering... Oh, Manuela. This will have to do. I'm, I'm fine. Just... Oh, just hold on a moment. Oh, hello. Sorry to have kept you waiting. So, what do you want? Excuse me? You had a reason for coming here, I assume. I've put a lot of time and effort into making it possible to talk with you, you know. No, you've done nothing wrong. Let's just say I'm not having a good day. Actually, I didn't have a good night. Never mind. What did you want, anyway? You heard from him? The fellow from last night? Huh. What did he have to say? Yeah, figures. Kind of saw it coming, actually. That's why I came back to my room and went to bed. To get over it. Thank you for checking in on me. Was that all you wanted? Well then, good night. I see. If one were to combine this incantation method with the power of a crest, then in theory, it should... Hey there. Still studying, are we? Isn't it past your bedtime? Claude, I really don't appreciate you interrupting me right now. Uh, but if you don't get your sleep, you're never gonna grow big and strong. Uh-huh. The last thing I need is you fretting over me as though I'm some child. I'm only a few years younger than you, you know. Hardly worth noting. Furthermore, my grades in magic and basically every other subject are far higher than yours. Whoa there. I'm not trying to treat you like a child, I promise. This is me treating you like... like a princess. Now, come along, princess. Brush your teeth and get yourself ready for bed. I could read you a story if that helps. Ugh, the audacity! Whatever it is you think you're treating me like, it's unendingly annoying. If a child and a princess are out, what's left? Should I treat you as a noble hero? Draw your sword, Lysithia. If you wish to continue studying, you must first defeat me in battle. Come now, face me like the hero of legend that you are. I find myself speechless in the wake of your staggering ignorance. Now, please, leave me be. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. But in all seriousness, you shouldn't neglect your sleep. You'll fall ill if you push yourself too hard. Oh, and just so you know, I heard a rumor that this library is haunted. <gasps> it's probably not true. Right? Right. Anyhow, I'm off to bed. Good night. You know, I am suddenly rather sleepy. Excuse me while I see myself out. <laughs> no matter how she tries to hide it, she's still a young girl at heart. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. 
Ah, meat is the best. Veggies and fish are great too, but uh, <laughs> there's nothing like a good cut of meat. May I join you? Hey, Lawrence, you here to eat? It looks like you barely grabbed anything. Oh, please, this amount will suffice for me. There's no need to compare our portions. No wonder you're so skinny. My little sis eats more than you. Come on, have some of mine. You need it more than I do. Uh, you offer me half-eaten scraps? The nerve. With manners like that, even a nobleman would be an absolute disgrace. Have you no dignity? You're pretty touchy, huh? It's probably just because you're hungry. Raphael, please, do you mind? I cannot enjoy the simple pleasure of a meal in these conditions. Why can't you enjoy your meal? You don't like what's on the menu? You wait here. I'll go to the kitchen and find something tastier for you. That won't be necessary. Please, just let me eat. In peace. Alone. I don't think you get it, Lawrence. Nothing goes with a meal better than good company. If leading the Alliance is your goal, you should really try eating with other people first. I'm afraid I fail to see the connection between leadership and dining. If you want to be a leader, you have to know how to get along with different types of people, right? If you really want to get to know someone, all you have to do is share a meal with them. Quite the contrary, unfortunately. It seems the more time I spend eating with you, the less likely we are to become friends. The, the more you eat with someone, the more you learn about them. Their likes, their dislikes, you know? You might get some of their food that way, too. You can eat more and bulk up. <laughs> All that talking made me hungry again. I'm gonna go get seconds. Oh, what an absolute bother. But I suppose he does have a point about observations of character at the dinner table. Ignatz, let us take a short break. I will pour tea. Please, choose a teapot for us to use. You want me to pick one? I don't see any other Ignatz around here, do you? Go on now, we're wasting time. The pots are over here. I will leave the selection to your judgment. Ah, let's see. How about this? That's rather plain. Why did you choose that one? The tea you chose has a very subtle taste, as well as a smooth, light texture. Such an unassuming tea calls for an unassuming pot, and one that complements the tea's color. In addition, the pot I selected has a floral design. Although we can't go for a walk today, we can still bask a little in nature's beauty. Very interesting. You know, you have an absolutely marvelous aesthetic eye. Precisely what I would expect from the son of a merchant house that has enjoyed the Gloucester's patronage for so many years. After we graduate, when you begin your trade in earnest, I will introduce you to my father. Oh, that sounds wonderful. But I'm afraid I'm already on the path to becoming a knight. Ah, right, you are a second son. Still, your eye for beauty is a talent that should not go to waste. Very well. If you are to be a knight, then I shall happily take you into my service. Ah, well... Hmm. What, does that displease you? Not at all. I just need a little time to think it over. His eye for the arts is unwavering, but in all other matters he is woefully indecisive. Right, then this goes here. Hello, Raphael. What exactly are you doing with that piece of wood? Hey, Hilda. I'm just doing this. With your bare hands. Impressive that just the outer ring is left. It makes quite a nice circle. Yeah. I just gotta polish it up and paint it. Then the base of the necklace will be ready. Sorry, did you say necklace? How's it look? I bet it's the right size, too. And this tree bark smells amazing. Now I just need to carve these boar tusks to hang from it. Boar tusks? I almost forgot. I was gonna add these wolf claws, too. 
And I could even add some color to them. And wolf claws? Huh? Is something wrong, Hilda? That necklace! It has a certain, uh, rustic charm? You're right. It really does. Want me to make you one while I'm at it? Oh, no. I wouldn't want to trouble you. Besides, I think it would look better on you than on me. <laughs> it would definitely look good on me. But this one's actually a birthday present for my little sis. For your sister? I, I mean, uh... uh, uh don't you think she might like something more feminine? Something cute? Something cute? What's wrong with something tough and rugged? This necklace is gonna have tusks and claws and stuff. But girls don't usually go for tusks and claws and stuff. There should be flowers or gems or... Here, I, I can talk you through it. If you're making a necklace for your sister, you might try putting a pretty little flower in a small crystal bottle and sealing it with resin. If you say so. But where would I find a flower that was pretty enough? Oh, honestly, I don't know much about flowers. But, hmm, now that I think about it, I remember hearing about a splendid flower that only blooms near Fodlin's throat. Fodlin's throat? That's on the eastern edge of the Alliance. I'd have to leave now if I'm going to make it back in time. <laughs> yeah, that does seem like a bit of a stretch. Okay, let me think. Um, where'd he go? Well... No matter. Was there any doubt? I can't believe I did it! I 
Better tell my brother about this. A stone? A stone. I do not understand. Yet, as I think of it, the pounding in my chest grows faster still. But is that me? Or is it you? Hmm. Mercedes. Her face looks familiar. The Western Church. The Central Church. They believe in the same goddess, but oppose one another. Fodlin is a complicated place. I am sorry that the kingdom's unrest did not stop with Lord Lenato. Professor, the hero's relics are incredibly powerful. Please, be on your guard. Really eating cake? Just awful what happened with the rite of rebirth. The infirmary. Well, it was a mess. Things are finally calm again. And so I've come here to unwind. Let me tell you, I put all of my knowledge to use keeping those kids alive. Still, the truth of it is that 
When someone faces death for the first time, well, they figure out who they are. They learn if they can do it again. We can't lose them, Professor. Not to battle or to cowardice. If you can keep them going, then I will too. Think of it, the sword of the creator belonging to the ancient king Nemesis. You have to master it as soon as you can. I can't wait to face off against such a legendary weapon. That's mine. Thank you for finding it. I heard about the things you did. I'm so glad Lady Ray is safe. I figure you're a great person after all, Professor. That cleaning kept me real busy. I better hurry to my next job. Oh, hey, Professor. You need something from me? I got a lot to do, so if it's not urgent, just find me later, okay? This wasn't the first time I've taken part in an Alliance Roundtable conference, but it was still exhausting. There's not enough cooperation in that group, especially from Lawrence's father. But at least my grandfather was surprisingly alert. Judging by that, I'd say he's got at least five more years in him. Can I ask you a favor? Hey there. Hey. Uh, I heard I'm s I figured. Hey, that's mine. Thanks for finding it. Woeful fate of being plucked from the water and eaten. Ah, Professor, you are so outgoing with all of the students. I would like to have more opportunities to connect with you, though I am certain my brother would disapprove. Might you help me with a favor? Professor, nothing to report. Oh, come to think of it, last month there was something to report, wasn't there? 
Thanks to you, I hear that everything was resolved. I never realized that bandits had entered. I'm not a great guard after all, am I? I hope you will forgive me one day. Maybe. Could you help me out? Knew I could count on you. Hey there. Is this it? There you go. Come back anytime. What do you require? Do you want to hire this battalion? We'll do everything we can. Farewell. I could use your help. The coffin of Saros in the Holy Mausoleum should have held her remains. Instead, they say it held the sword of the Creator. What could it mean? Some people are unhappy because they don't have the crest they want. And some are unhappy because they have a crest they never asked for. The head of the Western Church holds the title of Bishop. That's not as distinguished as an archbishop, such as Lady Rhea, but it still comes with a fair amount of authority. If someone in that position plotted an assassination, I cannot help but think it must have been instigated by some outside force. There are bishops in the Eastern Church as well, but to speak frankly, they do not have much impact. They are under the influence of both the Archbishop and the Leicester Alliance, so their ability to voice grievances is quite limited. Oh, that man I walked past earlier. That wasn't Lord Rodrigue, was it? House Fraldarius is a powerful noble family, linked to the founding of Fargus. Lord Rodrigue, its current leader, is a magnificent warrior. He's known as the Shield of Fargus, a dozen or so years ago, during the Northern Campaign in Srang, he performed splendidly as the King's right hand. Come to think of it, wasn't there someone from House Fraldarius amongst this year's students? <laughs> I am Rodrigue Achille Fraldarius. I bear the great honor of serving as a lord in the Kingdom of Fargus. I have come in Margrave Gautier's stead to retrieve their stolen relic. However, as I hear it, a group of students is to attend to this matter. I sincerely hope no harm comes to any of them. You acquitted yourself honorably last month. To think they'd go into the Holy Mausoleum and assault the Goddess Tower. I cannot imagine the Western Church was acting on its own. Someone must have been helping them. As for the masked knight who escaped, his days are numbered. I hope we find him soon, so I can kill him myself. I can't believe my own brother is the leader of the bandits. House Gautier is my true home, and his. Please, Professor. He really is one of the worst people I've ever known. But we still... We share the same blood. We're still family. Yeah.
A moment, please. Too, eh, Professor? Does that mean you're descended from nobility? You've certainly got the look for it. <laughs> I sure do wish there were more nobles like you, Professor. A teacher, a mercenary, and so very mysterious. How could a girl ever get enough? class were at that fight in the Holy Mausoleum, right? I sincerely hope the Holy Artifacts are unscathed. I admit I wish I could have been there to see it all, even if it does make me queasy. But I was there too early. I'd gone first thing in the morning. At noon, one of the monks chased me out saying I'd been there too long. Who were they to decide when I'd been somewhere too long? I would recommend taking a coat. It's chilly, even at this time of year. It also rains a fair bit. Don't get caught out there without protection, or you're sure to catch a cold. trusted the sword of the creator to you? I can hardly even fathom you being capable of wielding something of such power. Just who are you anyway? I thought school life would be peaceful and quiet with a sprinkle of drama to keep things interesting. But since you arrived, it's been one thing after another. Is that just a coincidence, I wonder? Oh, I was just kidding. Anyway, as I said before, I do like having a little drama in my life. Um, that reminds me. The Leicester Alliance is governed through roundtable conferences between the five most prominent allied dukes, the five great lords. First and foremost is Duke Regan, the Alliance's leader. Joining him are the heads of House Goneril, House Gloucester, and House Ordelia. Lastly, there is the newest addition, Margrave Edmund. These five each have voting power in the conferences. Before House Edmund, it was House Daphnol that was counted amongst the five. However, it is said that the head of that family relinquished their vote to House Edmund, which had only recently risen to significance. Professor, don't you think everyone's making too big a fuss over these crests or heroes relics or whatever they're called? How important can that stuff really be? Personally, I don't even care that I don't have a crest. I'll take muscles over crests any day. Heck, I'll take muscles over a hot meal. Actually... that our next mission is another bandit hunt. This time I've heard that their leader is the son of a noble family. <laughs> what a complete disgrace to the nobility. Hm. 
Professor, please leave Sylvain alone for the time being. The thing is, the bandit's leader who stole the relic is Sylvain's disinherited older brother. Hello there. I have a request. Hail, Professor. If I may introduce myself, I am Gilbert. My life has been spent as a dedicated knight. I am to accompany you on your assignment. I may have slowed a step in recent years, but I pledge to you the full extent of my abilities. No, Professor. The pleasure is all mine, I assure you. The thing is, Professor, the thing is. Yes, that's mine. Thank you very much. I've been looking for it. Hello? For a hero's relic to be stolen, it's unheard of. And just last month, the sword of the creator was almost stolen too. <laughs> Also quite unheard of. What impudence. You there. goings to the kingdom's north. I hear the people of north are cold and have much loneliness. Professor, I hear you have had work, uh, have worked as a mercenary in the kingdom. Did you find joy in this? You cannot remember? Is that having possibility? I have amazement. I had lost the place of this. You have my thanks. Professor, I'm going to keep training until I can beat you. plan to attack the monastery was some plot devised by the Western Church? That means they used Lenato. What right do they have to drag a good man like him into their schemes? and left the sword behind? Hmm. 
You guys have it bad in your own way. But believe me when I say, we've got it bad too. With all that happened last month, a great many knights were dispatched to the Western Church. And now we must set out for the Eastern Church, located in the far east of the Leicester Alliance. If I must die in Alliance territory, I wish it wasn't in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. I'd much rather go on a sightseeing trip to Deirdre. Oh, you don't know? Deirdre is House Regan's domain. It's called the Aquatic Capital. to spar with Gilbert of the Knights of Seros before. I couldn't get a single strike in. If that man is accompanying you on your assignment, you can rest assured that no harm will come to you. To be honest, he kind of reminds me of someone. But no, it must be my imagination, right? So... Maybe... The assassination attempt on Lady Rhea, the theft of a hero's relic. I am up to my ears in foul news of recent. Speaking of, there's a terrifying rumor swirling around Garrod Mock these days. Apparently, a spirit of death wielding a huge scythe has been kidnapping young maidens. Will the madness never end? Don't you think Professor Hanneman's been acting a bit... strange? Maybe he's made some kind of big discovery. of flames? Could it really? Yes, the actual crest of flames! <laughs> no, that is quite enough. I should compose myself. I must remain objective in my research. Objective. Professional. <sighs> the scandal with the Western Church troubles me. We cannot afford to let ourselves be swept along, and yet... Gerald was all furrowed brow earlier. Do you know what's got him so concerned? If there's a problem, I want to help any way I can. I did, but he just dodged the question. Still, it's worrying to see him like that. Thank you. 
You must be rather bewildered by the power that was hidden within. However, know that I believe in you. I have no doubt that you will use that power justly. You will most certainly fulfill the grand destiny that the goddess has seen fit to grant you. May I ask a favor of you? May I ask a favor of you? I'm pleased to have been invited. I am grateful. How quickly this delightful time has passed. However, we must return to our work. I appreciate your effort. Ah, Professor. Gerald was looking for you. It seems he has gone off somewhere. If he is not in his room, then surely someone has seen him. Ask around. I have something to ask of you. I have something to ask of you. Hey, you. Professor. Oh, Professor. Are you looking for Captain Gerald? I just saw him in the Knight's Hall a little while ago. He was talking with a female knight, but I didn't get a good look at who she was. Oh, Gerald? He said something about visiting a grave. There's a graveyard attached to the monastery, so you'll probably find him there. I can't remember where the graveyard is, but I bet Sedith knows. I can't believe- Please, Professor. Oh! That's mine! Oh, thanks, Professor. You really saved the day. Graveyard. Of course I know it. It can be a little hard to find. Would you like me to show you where it is? You need only ask. I will be here. Ha, don't you think maybe... Thank you very much. I appreciate your effort. Well... They're back? Ah, the graveyard. Of course I know it. It can be a little hard to find. Would you like me to show you where it is? Very well.
can you buy it at noon? Oh, thank you. I gave up hope of ever finding it. Professor. I wanted to ask you to join me, but I couldn't find you. So, here I am. I was thinking we should visit your mother. She's resting beneath this humble grave. Hmm? Oh, of course you would ask that. I wouldn't know where to begin. I suppose I haven't talked much about her. She was gentle and smart. Oh, so smart. A wonderful cook. Always kind to everyone. And she loved flowers. Whenever I brought her back an unusual flower, her face would light up. I cherish those memories. <laughs> I can't count how many times she made me happy just by smiling. And she smiled the most when she was pregnant with you. She died right after you were born. She wasn't able to spend much time with you. But she loved you with all her heart. That's the truest thing I know. Never forget it. This ring is the only keepsake I have of her. In time, it will be yours. One day, I hope you'll give this ring to someone you love as well as I love her. Well done. You have my thanks. one you're all set to this one you're all to this one you're all set to this one you're all set to this one you're all set to this one. 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 You're all set. See you again soon. There's someone who's slightly off. Oh well, that adds some color, I suppose. Learning these things gives me great difficult... uh... difficulty.
eating delicious food really takes my worries away. This is my favorite. I am rather happy you went out of your way to pick it, Professor. This is delicious! My absolute favorite! Yeah, you just get it, Professor. This is my favorite. This is my favorite! You've got great taste! That looks appetizing. Experience is everything. <laughs> I could get used to this. Experience is everything. Got lucky. 
I had no idea I could do something like this. I'll keep trying my best. I think I've got the hang of it. Get the next one, too. I think it's coming along.
I gotta ask you something. Makes sense to me. Teach. You think I'd cheat? On you, baby? Never. Come on. You should know me better than that. You're the only one for me. I swear. Hey, if you don't believe me, well... Oh, I get it. If I'm not your type, do you want me to introduce you to some other guys who have crests? They're all nobles, just like me. What? That isn't why I'm... You... You're worse than I thought! I just want you to be happy. You know, get what you're after. I hate seeing a girl cry. Especially one as beautiful as you. So, you know, maybe we... <sighs> so, Professor, do you enjoy spying on people? You look like you've got something to say, so say it. Hey, that was between me and her, not you. But, you know how it is. Most relationships, they end in heartbreak. Anyway, I don't know why she's so upset about me dating other girls. She didn't care before she found out, so why does she care now? <sighs> I really do hate seeing a girl cry. Believe whatever you want, but I'm honestly not sure if I can ever love again. Well, I figure the best way to mend a broken heart is to head out on the town. Why don't you join me? Who knows? Maybe you'll find love. I mean, I know I will. Calm down, it was only a joke. You've really got no sense of humor, you know that? Well, hello, Professor. You came all the way to my room to... Oh. You've brought the materials from your lecture I slept through. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's not that I want to miss lectures. Exactly. Drowsiness is my arch nemesis. For some reason, I just can't seem to win against it. <sighs> just talking about it makes me sleepy. Oh no, I couldn't possibly. I would certainly injure myself if I tried to train while drowsy. I must compliment you though. By this point in most conversations, I'm bored senseless. But I'm enjoying this. I wonder why. What is it about you that fascinates me so? You're definitely a strange one. In truth, your very nature is odd. You're definitely not a commoner, but you don't seem like a noble either. You're something else. And yet you can wield one of the hero's relics. You're like a hero in some silly legend. Or you could be a villain who came here to enact some evil plot. That wouldn't surprise me either. Hey, Professor. Will you ever allow me to investigate that crest of yours? It won't hurt a bit, I swear. I'm sure I could find out all sorts of things about your crest. And you. Of course, I'm not as experienced with such research as Professor Hanneman, but I do what I can. Someday, I think I might like to become a crest scholar. You never know. Oh, don't trouble yourself. I didn't mean now. I've got a lot of other research I'm working on at the moment. I tend to start a project, get bored, and then leave it be. I might be ready to investigate your crest soon. I'd have to tidy up a bit first. On that note... <sighs> Good night, Professor.
I thought I heard someone. Are you here to train? Care to train with me? Waving the sword around alone is boring. And I'm tired of crossing swords with worthless opponents. But you seem like a worthy adversary. I've always been interested in your technique. You learned from the former captain of the Knights of Seros, and traveled Fodlin fighting as a mercenary. On top of that, you wield a hero's relic, the legendary Sword of the Creator. Good sparring partners like you don't grow on trees. But know that I will beat you, and I will surpass your strength. Why? Hmm. I never really thought about that. I learned to thrust a sword before I learned to write my name. Of course, my upbringing wasn't unique. That's how it is for all children in my country. You're no use if you can't swing a sword, however mighty your crest may be. It was the perfect environment for me. I could live free of stodgy values and virtues. Grow strong so you may live, and live to grow stronger. That's what I was taught. Now I'm intrigued by your fighting style, and by who you really are. But that's enough idle chatter. Take out your sword. My mind is emptied of all but the thrill of the challenge. Thank you, Lady Bernadetta. I will take my leave. Oh, good. Uh, bye! Uh, goodbye! Finally. Oh, that was awful. Just terrifying. Ah! Please don't sneak up on me like that! That lady asked me to show her around. I tried to be polite, but strangers are just so nerve-wracking. Now that you mention it, I think you're right. I don't know if I ever had felt scared around you. I wonder why. You know, Professor, you might be the first person I've been able to speak to normally since I got here, and I have no idea why. I'm happy about it, too. When we first started out here, we had to do drills outside. I skipped those every chance I got. It's a terrible idea going out in the forest with all these people you don't even know. Thanks to you, though, I can actually make it through class now. I'm grateful for that. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't here. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> I'm okay. I am okay. I'm doing just fine. I feel safe here, thanks to you. What? You, you saw that? Why would you see that? You were watching me? That crosses the line, Professor. Singing? Me? Why would I be singing? I'd never be singing! I've never been so humiliated! Useless, worthless, unmarriageable! Ready? Here we go! We'll manage. We did okay. Guess I'm still growing. Now I see the heart of it. Guess I'm still growing. I think I've got the hang of it. Huh. I'm actually pretty good at this. I'm getting the hang of it.
There we go. Time for a break. Hey, Raphael. That's quite a load you've got there. It was my turn to do the shopping again, but I might have overdone it. Aren't those trips usually for food supplies? Why did you pick up a bunch of spears and gauntlets as well? I was passing by the smithy, and the old man called me over. He said he was finished repairing the training weapons, so I grabbed them since I was already there. I see. And those books? I had just left the smithy when I ran into a merchant I recognized. He said he had some books that he brought for the library, so I took them off his hands. Right. And that desk? Oh, this? Can you believe someone threw this away? It only needs a little work and it'll be good as new. Someone around here was just saying that they needed a desk. Uh, of course. Now, this is just a friendly observation, but I see surprisingly little of the food supplies that we actually need. <laughs> well, I uh, worked up an appetite from carrying all this stuff, so uh, I had a snack on my way back. Raphael, I appreciate the thought, but you can't get so carried away with helping out like that. You helped us all right out of dinner. And now that I've seen your struggle, I have no choice but to join in this vicious cycle of charity. Here, I'll lend you a hand. All of this stuff is pretty heavy. Are you sure you can handle it? You insult me. And no, I can't. I'll only carry the books and offer my support as you handle the rest. Oh no, it's Felix. He's coming right at me. If I run, he'll chase me. Maybe if I just hold really... Really still? <sighs> Ahem. <sighs> Whatever it is, I didn't do it, I swear. Uh, unless I'm offending you just by standing here. No, here. I believe this is yours. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's my satchel. Wait. Where did you get that? Stop asking questions and just take it. No! Trap! It's a trap! Why are you acting like this? Acting? Does this terror on my face look fake to you? You're being difficult. Come on, this is yours. I can't! Your icy glare has frozen me completely! Shut up! Just take the thing. No! Please, don't kill me. What? Who's going to... Sword! He's got a sword! Ah! My sword! How did you... I can't do this anymore! What an odd girl. But she's certainly caught my attention. I've never seen that technique before. No, oh, I still have to give this back to her.
Is that the one? Is that the one? Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Is that the one? Thanks a bunch. Come back. Stay focused. I stand ready. Ready anytime. That helps. I got this. That helps. Takes care of that. the golden deer for you. Thank you. Well done. Another step forward.
this is what I do. There's still a long way to go. Sorry. I'll celebrate later. Gotta keep improving. It's not luck, it's fate. It's hard to be happy about this. We've got your back. Everything is ready. <laughs> A trivial victory. I thought I gave it my all.
more than that.
will lend a hand. Oh, I got it! Sorry, did I hurt you? I can't afford to lose. That helps. You saved me. Thank you. I just worked harder. I don't have time for failure. I'm on it. Stay focused. I got this. That helps. Ready anytime. Thank you. Leave it to me. Ready and willing. I stand ready. Who, me? Who, me? Should have trained better. I get things done. I owe you one.
Sorry, but victory is mine. I expected as much. Really? Anymore where that came from. Thanks for that.
delicate flower, you know. Muscles proud. I owe you one. to it. underestimate an outsider. Stay focused. Thank you. Thanks. I'm on it. Ready anytime. Stand ready. Failure. 
Got a grasp on this. put in some effort for once. Huh, I'm actually pretty good at this. <laughs> Nothing to get excited about. Getting the hang of it. Thanks for inviting me. Mm. 
that looks delicious. I think this might be my favorite tea. Thanks. Ah, <sighs> this is great. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. I don't care what you think of me. I just don't want to lose to you. Thanks for the tea. Invite me by again sometime. We did good out there. I see. It's all making sense now. Now I see the heart of it. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm getting it! I think I get it. Well done. You have my thanks. Impressive. Thanks.
I did pretty well. I'm closer than ever to my dream. Didn't you say anything? You were praying so fervently, I didn't want to interrupt. I appreciate the sentiment, but I wasn't praying. No? What then? I was just thinking about the goddess. Were you now? Fascinating. Please, go on. Not here. Let's go somewhere else. So, you were pondering the existence of the goddess then? Yes. All right, consider this. The archives here have all kinds of texts about the goddess, right? But when people tell stories of the goddess, it's only myths and legends that glorify her. They probably hope to rake in more followers by glorifying the goddess as much as possible. That would be why the church tends to quietly shove all of their more questionable records under some secret rug somewhere. C claude don't put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. I was just wondering what the goddess looks like. That's the kind of thing I like to think about. What the goddess looks like? Well, I suppose if she really exists, she probably looks a lot like us. In fact, she probably wouldn't be so different from that old woman working here in the dining hall. What, Claude? Please stop. The goddess I imagine is absolutely beautiful. How rude of you, Ignatz. I'm sure that old woman was lovely back in her day. Hello, Marianne. You're well, I hope. I am, Lawrence. Thank you. I cannot help but notice you do not look it. Is that so? I feel fine. Hmm. Was there something you needed? Uh, how unseemly of me. My apologies. It is not my intention to stare. Does something about me seem... off? Oh, not at all. I was just remembering your father. Or rather, comparing my experience of him to you. Your father, Margrave Edmund. He is one of the shrewdest nobles in all the Alliance, with a noted gift for pointed speech. On and beyond the battlefield, his words have the power to move friend and foe alike. My own father has said he would not want to make an enemy of him. Naturally, I am of the same mind. Your father is blessed with gifts of confidence and eloquence. Yet compared to him, you seem always reticent and downcast. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cause you discomfort. It's just that the contrast between you and your father is striking. I have very little in common with my adoptive father. 
But he sent you to Garrick Mark. Clearly, he sees potential in you. I think I see it too. Yes, a certain charm, gravitas, if you will. Just like him. Oh. I can't say that I know too much about him. I should be going now. Y yes, y yes, of course. Please, take care. Oh, such grace, such serenity. How could such a beauty be hiding in plain sight? With a little polish, she would shine magnificently. Ah, Lawrence. At it again. Hello, Hilda. Are you training too? If that's the case, I may have to revise my opinion of you. Increased strength and skill would serve as perfect complements to your beauty and esteemed lineage. Um, no, I just left something here. I don't share your tireless work ethic. You're quite something. I don't think I've ever seen you take a break. When the fate of all the Alliance rests on your shoulders, the rigors of training seem paltry by comparison. Besides, when my admirers see that even an individual of my talent possesses a diligent work ethic, it is sure to inspire them. I see. But I was wondering... <laughs> Never mind. You're clearly busy. Oh, is there something you require? What do you need? There is nothing I cannot handle. But the trouble is, I'm no good at fighting. I'm a fragile young lady, not a fearsome warrior. I didn't even want to join the Academy, honestly. My brother made me. Of course. For a delicate flower such as yourself, no doubt battle must present a terrible hardship. <laughs> it does. It truly does. So, I was wondering if, in the next training session, you'd do my fighting for me? I mean, I can put on a tough, I'm actually fighting kind of air, but that's not quite enough on its own. Please, leave all of the difficulty to me. I shall permit no harm to befall you. Ah, I'm so happy. In that case, I'll focus on giving a convincingly soldierly performance. You know, Lawrence, you're a good guy. Not that I'd have expected anything less from a noble. With each of your foes that I vanquish, I shall only become ever stronger. Yes, leave it all to me. <laughs> What a guy. And all I had to do was ask. Hmm. Maybe I'll have a snack. Ah, oh, this theory just isn't coming together. The thought behind it is sound enough, but... Hmm. Hey, Lysithia. Your forehead's all wrinkled. You look tense. Is something wrong? You know you can tell your big bro rat... Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know you can tell me anything, right? Raphael, while I appreciate your offer, I'm not so sure you'll be much help here. What does that mean? Oh, are you researching something complicated? In that case, yeah, you're probably right. Is there something else I can help you with? I'm really good at other things, like training. <laughs> I have absolutely zero interest in such things. I have an idea. Do you want to get real good at playing tag? I can teach you. There's a trick to it that most people don't know. Like to not get tagged and stuff. Let me show you. It's too sunny to spend all day inside studying. Come on, Big Bro's gonna take you outside. Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up! Can't you see I'm busy? Go bother someone else. What nerve you have, too, calling yourself Big Bro? Like I'm your little sister or some nonsense. Just cut the act. Uh, did I really say that out loud? Anyway, my grades are miles better than yours. If you want to play the part of Big Brother, you probably benefit from studying way, way more. Like I said, I'm really good at other things. Just not classroom learning. I can't stand all the excuses. Clearly, you're the little kid here. You got all that? Now, don't bother me again. Understood? Bye. <sighs> she must be going through a rebellious phase. 
Sorry to keep you waiting. Ready to start cleaning? No, that's all right. Actually, I'm just finishing up. Oh, it's true. Look how tidy everything is. You've done such a marvelous job. I'm glad I didn't get in your way. <laughs> Thank you very much. So anyway, you can go now. Hmm? You were talking to your friend, right? I just have some things to put away. It's okay. I can manage without you. Oh, Ignatz, I thought I saw someone earlier. That was you, wasn't it? You know, I'd have been willing to help. You could have just said, hey, let's go and clean. It's all right, you were having a conversation. I didn't want to sneak up like I was eavesdropping, and really, I didn't need help. Oh, Ignatz, you darling. You're so considerate. Thank you so very much. Glad to be of service. I'll start putting all this away. Not so fast. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you overdoing it? Don't you think you might be taking on too much, hmm? Oh, uh, I didn't expect to hear that from you. Let me give you some advice. It's true that I like to delegate as many tasks as I possibly can, but when someone helps me, I make sure to lavish them with praise as a reward for their hard work. So, then we come out even. On the other hand, look what almost happened just now. You did all that work for me, and I almost missed it. Now, where would that leave you? With no praise, no thanks. You'd be losing out. Um, personally, I'd prefer to lose out rather than inconvenience someone else. For instance, I'd have felt terrible for intruding on your important conversation earlier. Consider the negligible loss to me versus the major inconvenience to you. Personal loss is always going to be the better choice, right? Huh. Well, if that's how you feel, then I'm not sure how to convince you otherwise. <laughs> I have to organize the library. I'll get in trouble if it's not done, and I can't think of anyone who'd do it for me. Hmm, since no one else is around though, time for a little break. What are those sounds? Leone, always at it. How exhausting that must be. Hmm, what's this? Hey, what are you doing? That's mine. If you leave it lying on the ground, people will think it's trash. I usually wear it around my neck, but I put it down while I'm training so I don't get sweat all over it. Well, people won't know that, will they? You should have just left it in your room. It's a good luck charm. If I don't keep it close by, then what's the point? How stubborn of you. I will say it looks to be a very well-loved charm. Captain Gerald gave it to me when I was a kid. If it's that important to you, you should wash it. Then again, I suppose it is made of wood. Have you considered coating it with resin? That would preserve it nicely. You could even accessorize it, make it look cute. <laughs> Thanks, but Captain Gerald made it especially for me. I'd really rather keep it just as it is. Well, if that's how you feel, I won't argue with you. Me personally, I'd choose a cute necklace over a dirty old charm any day. I'm sure you would. But Captain Gerald didn't treat me as some young girl. He treated me like a person who mattered and equal. He taught me everything. I don't want to forget his teachings. So I'm going to keep this charm just the way it is. Huh, what do you know?
there. This one, yes? I think this one, yes? I thank you. 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 Return soon, please. Hey, welcome. You have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. A ple you have a good eye. A pleasure do you have a good eye. A pleasure you have a good eye. A pleasure doing business. Come again. said her face I still have much to learn
quick. I may have... I still have much to learn. Professor, let me sing for you. Do you not like my voice? It would make a Pegasus dance with joy. Yeah! I'll sing so loud that my voice is gonna reach the sky! Need something? This one? You're all set. See you again soon. Really? You. How are you managing the Sword of the Creator? No problems? I hope you have not left it lying somewhere unattended or anything foolish like that. You will need the sword's power on your next mission. I trust you will handle it without much issue. I am trusting you. You must, however, you will... Scandal with the Western Church troubles me. We cannot... The glory of progress. A new path to tread. Brother is the leader of the bandit. Please, Professor. so much. I can't believe my... Please, Professor. Oh, I can really have this? Thanks so much. 
Thanks so much. I can't believe my please prefer. No, I really can't. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I can't believe it. Please, Professor. Oh, I can really have this? No, I really can't. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I can't believe please, Professor. Thanks so much. 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 Oh. Oh, Professor, <laughs> I didn't realize you were there. If we keep running into each other like this, people will start to talk. They'll say, Sylvain and the Professor are on the prowl. <laughs> ah, forget it. What do you need? Well, you're not wrong. I fell for that girl recently, but I just wanted to have some fun and leave it at that. So, I told her we should break it off. I guess she was feeling a little more serious than I was. She started crying, and everything got a bit complicated. Come on, Professor. Playing around with girls is the most fun a guy can have. Besides, I don't care what you think of me. I don't intend to change how I live my life. I'm a good-for-nothing, if you haven't noticed. But I'm still a noble with a crest. That's all anyone cares about. It's best to avoid getting too serious with fools like that. It only leads to trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna be forced into an arranged marriage with some random noble woman anyway. By the way, Professor, you didn't know you had a crest, did you? I see. I suppose a mercenary wouldn't be concerned with such things. Most children who are born to noble families are tested upon birth to see if they bear one. Even descendants of the ten elites, like myself, can't be legitimate heirs without a crest. That means as children, we're only accepted if we're born with one. The heads of most noble houses keep having kids until they get one with a crest. Those children then grow up to be heads of their houses, and the vicious cycle continues. Do you get it now? To all these commoner girls, I'm just a trophy. Or rather, a stud horse. See? I knew you'd get it. These girls don't love me. They love the potential rewards of loving me. If I marry a girl, and she gives birth to a child with a crest, that kid might become the next head of House Gautier. But nowadays, with the bloodlines getting weaker, there are a lot of kids like my brother, born with no hope. For ages now, those of us with crests have been envied and desired, but never for who we are. I understand the value of my blood, believe me. I hate how much I understand it. I know better than to dream of being free from this burden. I'm used to it by now. I used to think I didn't have the right to live freely. <laughs> That's right. You know what? I'm a bit jealous. The whole time you were growing up, you never knew you had a crest. 
You were free. Nobody pretended to like you. I kind of hate you for that. You were a spoiled brat who should pay for that crest. Maybe I'll collect the debt. <laughs> gotcha! Wow, you should have seen the look on your face just then. Don't mind me, Professor. After all, ladies love a dark and brooding noble. Oh. Professor. I can't please Professor. Hey, Professor. Pretty great timing. I want to ask you something. I'd like to be in your class, if that's possible. I've been thinking, maybe I ought to get serious about studying. Wow, very decisive. I like it. I'll be there on time and in the front row and everything. You'll never have a better student. I'm so sorry my older brother is causing you all this hassle, Professor. Don't misunderstand. I always thought he was a piece of garbage, but I never thought he'd steal the relic. I can't wait to see his face when he realizes I'm in the group that was sent to take him down. Hey, Professor, what's going on? A suspicious man? Where? Oh, is that him? What do you think he's up to? Never mind that. Let's get him! Why not? We can figure out what he's up to after we capture him. My instincts tell me that he's up to no good, and my instincts are never wrong. Come on, let's get him before he has a chance to strike! Huh? Huh! It leads to the plaza where the kids play! There's no way I'm letting this guy get anywhere near those kids! Uh, <sighs> Kaspar, why did you disobey your professor? Uh, well, I... I am not seeking excuses from you. I asked because I want you to consider your actions and apologize for them. It just so happens that you were correct in your assumption that this man was a villain. If that were not so, he would not have chosen to take his own life upon seeing you advancing toward him. Great! So I was... But, because of your actions, that is all we know. There is no way for us to know who he was what he was planning to do, or if he has allies lurking about. The only lead we have is a scorpion tattooed on his arm. If this indicates that he was a member of an underground organization, we have no way of dealing with it. Are you prepared to be held responsible if his group commits a serious crime? Oh, I couldn't possibly. What are you talking about, Professor? We didn't do anything wrong. Those kids might have been in danger if we didn't act. I couldn't just stand by and let that happen. Did you need something? My thanks. Delicious. Indeed. 
It was delicious. I hope you will invite me again. Say, Teach, this must be the tower, don't you think? You know, even for a tower, it's pretty, um, you know, towering. It's a remnant of ancient wars. Those thieves certainly found themselves a great place to nest. I hear their leader, Miklon, is a former noble. It makes sense that he would already know about this place. Several hundred years ago, this was an important stronghold for defusing invasions from the north. Back then, this tower was built for both surveillance and defense. It will be difficult to seize it. Gilbert, isn't it? You hail from the kingdom, right? No wonder you're so knowledgeable. While we're chatting so amicably, do you mind if I ask some questions? I don't mind. If I can answer them, I will. Have you ever seen the Lance of Ruin? I have. A long time ago. It was an impressive, if not eerily ominous, weapon to behold. According to Margrave Gautier, Miklan has used the lance to turn the tables on his pursuers. Is that right? Then those without a crest can use it as well. Interesting. As far as I knew, that wasn't possible. And then we have the mythical sword of the Creator, which can't be used by anyone except Teach, crest or no crest. Maybe you're just that special, Teach. Or maybe there's something you're not telling us. Either way, I expect big things from you in this battle. <laughs> Are you now? Then why don't you hand over the sword of the creator for a bit? Then again, it would just be a heavy blade in my hands. <sighs> there's no justice in this world, Teach. Uh, the rain is really coming down now. Let's finish this quickly.
The enemy is close by. We're almost to the top floor. Phew. Why did we have to climb so high before a battle? Eh, at least it's better than fighting in heavy rain. Don't hold back for my sake. My brother is going to pay for everything he's done. Who, me? Ready and willing. Let's get to it. I'm on it. Stay focused. Leave it to me. Who, me? I stand ready. I got this. Well done. Ready anytime. Appreciate it. Thank you. Much needed. The captain's in trouble. Hurry up, you fools! Enemies approach from the lower floors. Watch the rear flank. Should I have held back? I still have much to learn. Was that helpful? So nice of you. That helps.
sword. Naturally. I thought I gave it my all. You underestimated me. There's still a long way to go. setting a very good example. Thank you.
as expected. Let's think carefully. Thanks for that. You're the best. Magnificent. Thank you. 
were outmatched. Sorry, but victory is mine. Thank you. Two coming. Child's 
Not enough. I'm still not satisfied. comfortable. Thanks for that. Child, yeah. not enough. 
You're a big help. didn't give it your all. I'm not setting a very good example. This is my duty. Be mindful. It's 
over. <laughs> Plenty more where that came from. Was a good try. Progress suits me well. Stay focused. Go! Attack them from both sides! It's an ambush!
Much more than that. Well. This is what I do. Perfect comprehension. I'm a bit uneasy. <laughs> Sorry. Ready anytime. Thanks.
It's your call. <laughs> Sorry. Scorn. Must all do our part. Careful. Thank you. Ready any time. I did it. I did. I'll try even harder next time. Leave it to me. I stand ready. Thanks for that. So, 
You think you can take the lance from me, huh? I'll kill you. I'll kill every last one of you! Child! Not enough! Sorry. Hey, Ben. I got this. Thank you. Ready and willing. Stay focused. Apologies. Thanks. I'm on it. Who, me? Why have you come, you crest-bearing fool? I'm here for the Lance of Ruin, Miklon. Hand it over. I don't want to humiliate you, but I will. <sighs> Hurry up and die already. If not for you, if it hadn't been for you... Shut up! I'm so tired of hearing that. You've always blamed me for something that isn't my fault. Not bad for your kind. A bunch of spoiled, rotten children.
What the? Miklod! Is that you? That form. Oh my. Is this your first time fighting such a thing? Then listen well to what I say. has caused them to grow quite large. Their life force is beyond a mortal like yourself. You cannot win unless you fell them twice, or even thrice. Even if you've cornered one, you cannot let your guard down. Those things are even worse when threatened. Can you see that barrier? It is surrounded by great power. You must break through to fight that thing. A strong attack or gambit might help to break through more quickly. If you can break the barrier, that power will have nowhere else to go, and that will likely cause confusion for that thing. It cannot counter while confused, which means that is the best time to attack. If you break down all of their barriers, not only will they be confused, they will not be able to move for a short while. Without the power flowing around them, they will not be able to restore their barriers. You might even be able to get something from them. They have such might that they will not fear you alone. But a battalion could prove useful on that front. Attack them with a gambit to draw their attention and force them to target you. Be on your guard when they have realized their full power. The damage caused at times like that is not contained to just one spot. Once they have charged some power up, their barriers will be restored. You really must pay close attention to those things. Distract them with a gambit, or just take them down before they can attack. In any case, think carefully before you act. You should be conquering that thing instead of talking to me. If you're out of questions, get over there and fight! How awful. So the hero's relics are hiding a terrible power within. I can't even tell friend from foe anymore. And I feel for him, but the best we can do now is finish this quickly. Appreciate that. Thank you. 
Well done. Thank you. What is that? It's like watching a bad dream come to life. Goddess, the beast is gone, yet Miklon and the Lance remain. We defeated him, somehow. Let's grab the Lance and return to the monastery. Miklon, my brother. changed. It was as though that lance was swallowing him whole. Upon 
on that side, it makes sense that your students were upset. I wonder if those relics truly hide such power. Yet even still, that power seems familiar. That form as well. As one who wields the sword of the Creator, does that mean you possess that power too? Professor, you have returned. The Goddess is indeed generous with her divine protection. I have already heard Gilbert's report about what happened. See to it that you keep what transpired at the Tower to yourself. People would lose faith in the nobles should rumors spread of one using a relic and transforming into a monster. All regions of Fodland would fall into chaos. We must avoid that at all costs. Please ensure the students who accompanied you understand that as well. Have I made myself clear? His transformation into a black beast was nothing short of divine punishment from the goddess. Punishment for someone arrogant and foolish enough to use a hero's relic even though they were unworthy and unqualified. If someone without a crest were to wield the relic you possess, they would likely meet the same fate as Miglon. You, however, have been chosen. You are worthy of wielding the sword of the Creator, so there is no need to worry. The Church will formally return the lance to House Gautier, if you would. What is the meaning of this? Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lady Rhea, I am overjoyed and beyond grateful to you for recovering the relic of my family, House Gautier. Now, may I please have that lance? I have received direct approval from my father to take possession of it. As the next head of House Gautier, do you swear that you will never cause such a deplorable incident to transpire? On my family's name, and on my brother's life, I swear it. <sighs> Very well. However, I have one condition. You must never allow another to wield this lance. Your brother clearly demonstrated what fate awaits those who break that restriction. Yes. I... I will not soon forget. Nice work, Teach. It's thanks to you that we successfully completed our mission. As for Miklon, I wonder if he really believed he could wield a relic. Agreed. He probably just wanted to get his hands on it, even though he knew it was futile. Though, I'm sure he wasn't counting on turning into a monster like that. I wonder if that monster represents another aspect of a hero's relics. What a strange and terrifying power. Stories of misfortune have followed the hero's relics since ancient times. Tomas, you've caught me by surprise. That's not easy to do. Though I suppose I should have expected to see our librarian in his library. I am sorry to intrude. I simply heard you speaking of the hero's relics. I can tell you more about them if you'd like. The story goes that Nemesis was corrupted by evil because of the sword of the Creator. Other heroes also lost themselves by continuing to use the relics, transforming into black beasts with twisted souls. There used to be a great many records regarding the dark history of the relics. It used to be. They have been destroyed across all of Fodlan, stripped from their shelves, including those that resided at this very library. You make it sound like the church is covering up the truth. But now that you mention it, Rhea was very specific about not wanting anyone to find out what happened at Conan Tower. Hey, Tomas, why are you telling us all of this? It seemed like you were searching for answers about the relics, what is a librarian if not a guide in the search for knowledge? And not only have you been searching, but you have been doing so through the night. I would suggest you stop before the night's notice. And that is enough meddling for today. Please excuse me. So I've been found out, have I? I suppose I do spend more time at the library than most students. But I won't stop. I can't afford to. 
teach. You don't really expect me to tell you something so personal just like that, do you? Though, I wouldn't mind sharing if you were to tell me some of your secrets in exchange. I can't let this exchange pass without comment. If you're sharing secrets, perhaps I can share one as well? Are you sure you could survive that? I'd say you're the least likely to share secrets out of everyone at the Academy. <laughs> Coming from you, I'll take that as a compliment. After all, you're easily the student with the most secrets. I'm afraid you overestimate me. My secrets don't amount to much. But back to teach. Don't try to change the subject, Claude. We're talking about secrets. Yours. Who is your father? And why did you appear so suddenly as if from nowhere? Duke Regan's eldest son died in an accident. Having tragically lost other family members as well, he was without an heir. The Alliance would undoubtedly have been shaken if House Regan had lost its position of leadership. But then you showed up. Why did you return to House Regan? What brought you to the monastery? Oh boy, I'm trapped here. I have no choice but to surrender under your intimidating gazes. My dream, in truth, is a selfless dream, but I require power to make it a reality. When I learned about the power of my crest, I knew I had a chance. So I'm chasing that dream, to the bitter end, if need be. I came to this monastery because I thought I might find someone useful, someone to help me on my path. So, what do you think? If you promise to help me achieve my dream no matter what, I'll promise to tell you anything. I have my own dream to tend to. I pray that yours does not interfere with mine. What about you, Teach? I see. Well, now isn't the time to discuss this. You are still my Teach, after all. Professor, you have done well to complete such a difficult task. You have shown exceptional skill in leading your students. I am forever grateful for the safe return of the hero's relic. Just as I expected, you have mastered the sword of the creator. <laughs> now then, I shall tell you about your mission for the coming month. Re Archbishop! Seteth, what troubles you? Flane is missing. I cannot find her anywhere. Professor, have you seen Flane recently? I have searched everywhere. Where could she be? She may be in danger. Oh no, 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 what am I to do? Calm yourself, Sedith. Professor, we shall continue our discussion another time.